Hey everybody, my name is Blackjack, and welcome to my review rant of Hurdy Gurdy. As always, I'll be focusing on the five things that I believe that make a good video game. Those being story, visual design, audio design, content, and whatever gameplay. Fuck it, let's get through this travesty by starting with the story. So, um, you play as a boy named Gertie, who wakes up on the day of the tournament, and then he, uh, he tries to wake up his father, and he realizes he's not doing that. So he travels to meet with Grandma, who tells him to talk to Yggdrasil, the protector of the island. I'm not trying to be this vague in terms of setting and plot, that's literally the information the game gives us. I don't know the name of the island, and I barely understand what the tournament is supposed to be. I just know that Gertie needs to wake up his dad so that he can compete. <laughs> Yggdrasil tells Gertie that the only, the only way he can wake up his father is by defeating the main villain of the game. Uh, that shows up at the end, and whose name isn't even that important. Uh, Sadorf. That, that's his name. Thanks, Wiki. <laughs> Uh, just know that he's the bad guy, uh, the purple alligator guy, yeah, him. Anyway, Gertie travels throughout the island, meeting NPCs who don't really matter except for the bread maker, but he doesn't even matter, collecting magic items to help herd creatures. Gertie then makes it to the tournament, competes, and wins, and the day is saved with the dance party. Oh, and Gertie's dad wakes up, I guess. I, I don't know. The characters aren't even important, you know? It's... <sighs> Man, Gertie is like the only character worth mentioning. I, I don't know who plays him. The credits only said... All in the game, LTD was in the head of casting and production. Um, Gertie starts off afraid and naive, and towards the end he becomes slightly less afraid. I'd even dare say he's brave for venturing throughout this entire island by himself and hurting those fucking grumps. He's kind of mischievous, scaring people all the time and shit, but other than that, nothing else worth mentioning. Moly is the tutorial character who helps Gertie, and he's kind of witty, I guess. He was useful in explaining the mechanics of the game though, and I enjoyed that he popped up all over the place. It felt like Gertie had a traveling companion of sorts. All the other characters don't really serve anything other than being a point to reach to progress through the game. Even the last Elder Yggdrasil is kind of pointless. He's the Elder who imparts his wisdom into Gertie, and by that I mean he gives Gertie a stick that makes music to attract creatures, and he mentioned something about an acorn of life I think or something. It, it didn't really play a part in the game so it must not be that important. Oh, speaking of music though. Um, the music's really good in this game. It's composed by Martin Iveson and Peter Connolly. I like that the music that plays throughout the levels changes when Gertie's playing his flute or through the stick. It's kinda, it's a nice touch. Diegetic sounds are on point in this game though. Each level has its own unique sounds and environment, whether it's the thunder in Midmere or the thwip noises in The Lost Bear. The text isn't synced to the voices though. Um, sometimes they start off before the text appears and others, the text begins before the voices does. It's not that big a deal, I just thought I should point it out. Visually speaking though, I think this game looks nice. I like the looks of the characters, they give me like a Disney Warner Brothers animation vibe, you know? I like the environments, um, they have nice colors to them. Each is visually appealing as well. I was never disgusted by the look of a level, so there's that, right? <laughs> uh, even the creatures are, are neat looking, the Gromps and Grimps especially. The Grimps remind me of those gremlin creatures from like Jimmy Neutron, I think they were called like Twonkies or something. Gertie has a lot of expressions, which I feel is helped due to the artistic style of this game. Let's shift gears real quick to the content. I don't want to talk about gameplay. I want I want that to be the last thing I, I touch upon. Um, the game offers a behind-the-scenes look at the game via concept art, and something that I've never seen before in other video games. Concept animations, and sometimes there are deleted levels and sneak peeks to Tomb Raider, among other things. Uh, I would love to see more of these. However, in order to do so, you need to collect 100 bells in each level. Upon collecting 100 bells, you get to pick up a golden cowbell, in which you give the cow guy and he unlocks a bonus feature dubbed extras on your main menu. That normally wouldn't bother me, but the gameplay is the single worst thing in this fucking game. More so than the glitches, but we'll get there in a second. Alright, so the game... Oh, man. The game is a puzzle platformer, alright? The puzzles lie within the level design. For me, I didn't find most of the levels to be too bad, in fact, I actually enjoyed quite a bit of them. Um, the main mechanic is to herd the creatures into the designated pins. You have an annoying mini-map, which is frustrating to use. Um, it's frustrating for me, personally, because I found it necessary in order to beat most of the levels. Normally, that's not a bad thing, however, my issue is, is that it takes up so much of the fucking screen. It's huge! And to add insult to injury, you can make it even take up more of the screen! A fourth of the fucking screen is taken up by this fucking map! It's, it's, it's beyond ridiculous how, how big this fucking map is. Along the way, you get power-ups and tools to help you herd the creatures. Tools like a magic flute and horn to help you scare and make creatures follow you, and power-ups like the magic boots and swimwear. At the start, Gertie can't do shit. 
he can barely jump, and I thought that was cool at first. Kind of like uh, Captain Toad, you know? Uh, he can't jump and you have to like solve puzzles around the whole environment and levels and stuff. I thought that was pretty neat. I wanted to I wanted to, to see how this game would play out. But then, in the second level, you got the boots, which allow you to leap over buildings and run super fucking fast. Mario, eat your heart out, bro. Alright, Gertie is where it's at. <laughs> Gertie can't swim until near the end of the game, in which he receives the magic swimwear from defeating the only boss in the fucking game. And it's not even the final boss! Uh, speaking of bosses real quick, when I said only boss, I meant the only traditional boss. I.e. you hit the boss while he- while dodging the fucking attacks to win. You know, like, normal bosses and shit. The bosses in this game consist of time trial hurting events in which you meet a dude and then they gloat about how they're better than you and that you're just a child and you can't do shit and then you need to hurt the creatures without letting them die while trying to beat their time. None of them are too bad except for the final boss who has three rounds. Each trial might take a few tries to get just right. And they're not that bad. Actually, I had fun figuring them out. They were, they were pretty good. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna add a, a new topic of discussion for these reviews. Um, this game kind of made me do it. <laughs> so for right now I'm calling it frustrations. I can't think of a better thing to call it. Um, maybe I'll just call it rants instead of nitpicks. Uh, it's similar to nitpicks, but this will actually affect the game's score in the end. Um, wh where do I begin? Okay, so how about the gameplay? The game concepts are unique, but its execution is horrible. Half the mechanics don't work the way you think they'll work. For instance, you get the magic horn after beating it at the trial of some guy out somewhere. I think he was an elf. I don't know. It's funny how unmemorable the characters are in this game. Like, I literally beat this game today as of writing the script. And I did that part yesterday. And I don't even remember half the shit I did in that game. So anyway, uh, the fucking horn. This thing doesn't even work half the time. Its purpose is to lure the grops away from eating the creatures by luring it so that you, they can chase you. And the issue is... It doesn't do that. You'll blow the horn and nothing happens half the time. I don't know if you need to face the direction of the gromp, or you need to be close to the gromp, or you need to suck the gromp's dick using the horn or some shit for it to fucking work. My point is, I had to restart many challenges because the gromps were just like, yeah, whatever, I want some fried fucking chicken, and no ten-year-old boy will stop me. So the horn also scares most creatures into running away. Uh, that can be useful. That is, unless you're dumb, like me, and position the creatures in an area in which they'll just run away, and they'll just lemmings their way off a fucking cliff, or into a fucking river and kill themselves. Ugh, man. Oh, and the magic stick is only useful on the dupes. Uh, those are the chickens. Uh, speaking of them real quick, they are the worst fucking thing about this game. In order to herd the fucking dupes, by the way, fuck the dupes. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, you need to chase them. Okay, so that's that's not so bad, right? But since they have a mind of their own, they just fucking run behind you. Or into a grump. Or into a river. Or off a fucking cliff. My point is, is that they're annoying to herd, and they're the only creature that's herded this way. Every other fucking creature can be herded using the fucking flute. Not the fucking dupes, apparently. Fuck the dupes. They think Gertie's sense of music is trash. But they huddle around the sticks, so why won't they follow you? Fuck the dupes, man. I'm on Team Gromp with this one, okay? I want to eat the dupes. They look delicious. Oh, what was I talking about before that tangent? Oh yeah, the stick. Y yeah, the stick isn't that useful. It can be if you use it to painstakingly lure the dupes through the gate so they won't fucking die, but other than that, your flute is your, uh, your go-to hurting tool. Um, the game goes downhill when you get the hammer. The hammer makes a decent game into a tedious, annoying, and not fun game. Now, this section honestly wouldn't exist if it weren't for this piece of shit mechanic. So, remember the bells from earlier and how they uh, unlock bonus content? Well, that's not their only thing they do. You see, the hammer's one true purpose in life is to hit rainbow switches. Those only appear if you collect a certain amount of bells on a level to unlock a certain switch. Normally, that wouldn't kill a game for me. Normally. But this game decides to lock the end of some of the fucking levels behind 100 bell switches. This game forces you to search through some levels near the end of the game, finding every optional collectible to progress through the game. I nearly quit playing this game because of this a few times. And I'm not saying exploration is a bad thing in a game. In fact, I love exploration in games. My issue is that there's a ton of different ways to avoid trying to beat a level by collecting every bell. For instance, you can create small puzzles that unlock switches for you to hit, or hide the switches in areas of the level. 
I mentioned in the playthrough that you can have added multiple small routes that can lead into a group of bells or hidden switch to progress, you know? It's not like this game's opposed to puzzles after all, it's a fucking puzzle platformer. It feels like this game is just trying to make the levels longer by locking the end of the levels via the collection of all the bells. The other reason I nearly quit this game was due to how buggy and how glitchy this game is. There, there's no glitchy segment in this video because this whole fucking game is a giant glitch, alright? <laughs> Seriously, the longer you play this game, the more glitchy and the more buggy it gets. Sometimes the game softlocks you if you accidentally stumble upon something you shouldn't do. I mean, granted, you shouldn't be doing this, but the game shouldn't fucking softlock you either, so... <laughs> The, the other glitches make the bells to spawn or put two guards on top of each other in an area in which they will constantly spot you if you head there. I made a guard face through a railing to walk in an area he's not supposed to. I made a guard turn around and stay like that until I reset the game. I made a bear face through a gate with no way of getting him out. Oh, oh, and the fucking camera. Oh my god, this camera breaks the game worse than the glitches do. At least the glitches can be fixed by resetting the console, the camera's there from the fucking start. Here's how it works. There are three zooms the camera can be in. Close, standard, and overhead isometric mode. Uh, it's called shepherd mode in this game. Personally, I like the third option. It gives the player the most visibility, especially if you're using the fucking map. This fucking thing gets stuck on everything though. The walls, the floor, the ceiling, your fucking asshole, doesn't matter what it is, it'll get stuck there. I've dealt with bad camera controls before, but this game takes an extra step. This game's camera has a mind of its own. It will occasionally switch to different zooms, whenever it feels like it seems. Uh, it slowly moves on its own too, and the worst is when it combines those two actions together and it leads me to wandering around aimlessly, fucking blindly, into grumps, into the wall, through the wall, it doesn't fucking matter, the point is this camera sucks dick, okay? It's sad to say this, but this game fails as a game for me. A game no longer becomes fun when it prolongs itself artificially, and it has mechanics that just don't work. And what sucks too is that I had high hopes for this title. I picked this up one day at my not so local mom and pop shop for like six bucks. I saw the cover and was like, wow this game looks like an enjoyable bad game. How wrong I was. What makes it worse is then I saw the developers. Core Design, and if you don't know them, they're a subsidiary of, at the time, Squaresoft, and now Square Enix, that developed a little series called Tomb Raider, among other games, you know. Naturally, once I saw that, I was like, holy shit, this game might actually be good. And honestly, this game started off not that bad. Actually, I'd even say it was okay. I, mean, I was enjoying half of the game up until I got the hammer and everything just went fucking downhill. It was definitely unique. Give it that. I never played a game like this before. But the longer I played it, the more frustrating, the more unenjoyable it became, and the worse it got. The game added new mechanics that felt shoehorned in, like the stealth mechanic in the last level, or or the, the beavers, and how you have to pick up, the, find the beavers and get the money just so that you can progress through the game. And it hindered it even more. It has what I feel to be too many levels. I feel like some of these levels just didn't need to be there. It has a horrible camera, and it's a buggy, glitchy mess. You want my honest opinion? And if you're at all curious about it, maybe play like half the game up until I think Moonlight Moonlit Peaks, I think it's called. Maybe up until then. Other than that, I'm giving Hurdy Gurdy an unfortunate 4 out of 10. I'll see you guys for the next game. Peace.